What's going on guys, Mango here, and today I'm bringing you the complete Overwatch Retribution Challenge Mission Guide. I've already made a video for Uprising and will make a video for Storm Rising next, so keep an eye out for those. I'll start each video by giving map specific tips before walking you through each mission, starting with heroes to pick and avoid, tips to complete the level, and any other things to look out for as you progress through the mission. I'll put a timestamp to each individual mission in the description in case you guys are looking for a specific one. Let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Okay, let's talk Retribution. This mission introduces Talon forces, so let's go over the ground rules with these guys. These guys are troopers. They are not really a threat, even when in a group. The guy with the white head is an enforcer. Don't f*** with these guys because they will f*** you up. Their shotgun can easily one-shot any non-tank hero, so respect it. Keep your distance from these guys and prioritize eliminating them before the troopers. There are also two mini-bosses, the Sniper and the Assassin. The Sniper will also one-shot non-tank characters if you are standing still, so you need to pay attention if she is targeting you, and if she is, break line of sight. The best way to deal with her is to use mobility to get close to her and make her pull out her pistol. Genji and Reaper are particularly good at this. Alternatively, since she stands relatively still while aiming, Zenyatta can discord her and bring her down super quick if you are planking off headshots. Just be sure she's not aiming at you when you're doing this. The Assassin can be a big ol' pain in the butt. Once she spawns, she will teleport three times, then charge someone on your team. If she hits her target, she takes them to the ground and does damage until someone stops her. The big tip here is to simply melee the assassin if she jumps on your teammate, as this will stop the attack and give your team an opening to damage her. A better strategy is to disrupt her before she even reaches her target. There are several ways to accomplish this, but flashbang, hack, hook, or even an earth shatter are some of the easiest. Even putting a maywall in her way or juking her with a wraith can be enough to disrupt it. The final boss you will encounter is the Talon Heavy Assault. The key with this guy is to take things slow, as you're most likely to die if you are rushing to kill him. The biggest tip I have for you here is that his chain guns only lock on to one person. If you can tell he's locked onto you, quickly break line of sight, and if your teammates are spread out, they will be able to free fire onto him. Make sure to target his head and the red containers on his back, as these are his critical hit spots. Heroes I found really helpful on this game mode were Zenyatta, Mei, McCree, Reinhardt, and D.Va. Zenyatta for the Discord Orb onto bosses, Mei for her ability to freeze the talent Heavy Assault, McCree to stun Assassins and Heavy Assaults, Reinhardt for Earth Shatters on Assassins and Heavy Assaults, and D.Va who can Defense Matrix Enforcer Shots, Sniper Shots, and talent Heavy Assault Bullets. Okay, let's talk about the missions. Challenge Mission 1, Surgical Strike. Only critical hits do damage. This mission sounded daunting at first, but it's not actually too bad because most of the AI are slow moving and easy to land headshots on. You'll play the mission pretty much the same as you would normally. This challenge mostly just impacts the characters that you choose. D.Va and Roadhog are good picks from the tank slot because it is easy to score critical hits with them and both offer strong defensive abilities to protect players from dangerous enemies. Roadhog's ult also does an insane amount of damage to the red critical hit spots on the Talon Heavy's back. High damage single shot DPS heroes work best here and I would include one of the following characters on your team. Ash, Hanzo, McCree, Mei, or Widowmaker. For support, I think Zenyatta makes the most sense here because he can dish out a ton of critical damage and his discord orb makes the mini bosses much easier to manage. In the first area that you spawn, you'll fight off roughly three waves of enemies. They'll come from either the left side doors, the right side doors, or directly down the middle from the windows in the ceiling. You will also see reinforcements that spawn halfway through these waves that usually spawn behind you or in the upper levels of the map. This part really shouldn't be too hard, just make sure you focus on the enforcers when they spawn as they present the biggest threat. The enforcers that will give you the most trouble are the ones that spawn behind you halfway through each wave, but they have really loud footsteps so just listen for those footsteps and you should be fine. A sniper or an assassin will spawn with the third wave of enemies so pay attention to those sound cues otherwise they might sneak up on you and get an early kill. 
The sniper should be a fairly easy kill here if you all focus fire her, but try and do it quickly because it's easy for an enforcer to get close to someone without them noticing while you're trying to focus the sniper down. After you finish off the mini boss, clear out the rest of the adds and the door will explode, leading the way to the next area. Be careful when you go through this doorway because there will be enforcers that spawn to the left and right and you don't want to get trapped in the hallways with them. Just take your time, play as a team, and you should get out of this just fine. Next, move on to the next section of the map and a mini boss will spawn. If it's a sniper, discord her and take her out quickly with a few headshots. If it's an assassin, try to focus on any enforcers that spawned with her while she's teleporting around and then as soon as she charges, try and juke her out and focus her. One of the biggest challenges of Surgical Strike is that quick melees don't get the assassin off your teammate. So it's important to try and interrupt her attack before she gets to your teammate with an ability like Hook or Flashbang because if she gets onto your teammate, it's very likely they're going to die unless you're able to kill her before she finishes off your teammate. After that, head to the docks. If you have any characters with boop potential, this is a fun place to actually boop enemies off the map as they arrive on the boats. If not, just try to focus down the enforcers as quick as possible because a mini boss will spawn shortly after you enter this area. This mini boss has almost always been a sniper and she'll usually spawn at the top of the stairs but sometimes she'll land on one of the shipping crates near to where you enter the section. Just slap a discord on her and take her out quick. After that, take out all the ads that break through the door towards this section of the map, making sure to focus on those enforcers and click heads. Once you clear out this room, a sniper will either spawn on the high ground on the opposite side of the bridge, or if you don't see a sniper, that means an assassin is going to spawn in the area right past that side of the bridge. Remember, you can't melee the assassin off your teammate, so it's really important to try to use abilities to interrupt her attack. Additionally, I think if you do enough damage to her as she's running towards you, it'll actually stop her attack, but don't quote me on that. She might just be a little glitchy. Clear out the rest of the adds, then head to the next section of the map where a Talon Heavy Assault unit will spawn. He's very likely to pin into your team like he does in this clip, so be ready to backpedal. This is going to be a good time to use your ultimates. Maze Blizzard is super helpful here because it'll keep the heavy frozen for a long time while you pile on damage, but a Zenyatta ult can also be super clutch here too as you just try and force him down really quick. If you don't have that kind of firepower, just keep backpedaling towards the bridge and making sure to make use of any cover you can find if the heavy is targeting you. Additionally, if you can get a Roadhog behind that Talon Heavy, you can use his ult on those two red canisters on its back and do a massive amount of damage. You can almost kill him in one ult use if you can get it all on those red containers. Fun fact about the next room, once you get to the art gallery, you can actually skip this entire section by just walking straight out the doors in the back. You'll need your whole team to go through that second set of doors, but once the last person is through, the doors will shut and you'll be able to proceed with the mission like normal. However, if you do decide to fight it out, be warned that an assassin is likely to spawn. My favorite way to deal with this assassin is to back all the way out of the room to where the Talon Heavy spawned. That way, the assassin will follow you out there, but you won't have to deal with all those other enemies. After that, proceed to the courtyard where you'll fight off waves of enemies in what is pretty similar to the first area, but more challenging. They're going to start mixing in a mini boss with almost every wave of enemies they throw at you. So hopefully at this point you've gotten pretty custom to dealing with them. One thing you'll want to look out for is a large group of enforcers that will spawn shortly after the first mini boss. You're going to be used to diving into large waves of enemies without being punished, but this group will definitely punish you even if you're a tank, so the best strategy is to just keep your distance and whittle them down from afar. After you battle through a few more waves of enemies and mini bosses, the Talon Heavy Assault unit will appear. Once again, this is a good time to utilize your ultimates. I think one of the best ult combos you can use right here is a May ult to freeze the Talon Heavy and then a Roadhog ult directly into the two canisters on its back to do maximum damage. If that's not an option, try to maintain your high ground as you deal damage to him. So pretty much the opposite of what our team is doing right here. The advantage of high ground in this situation is when the Talon Heavy tries to shoot at you, you can just back up and you'll no longer be in his line of sight. If the heavy makes his way up to the high ground you're holding, just try to rotate around to one of the other high grounds on the map, making sure to kite him around corners so he doesn't have a clear shot at you or your team. As long as you're patient, keep your distance, and use your ults appropriately, you should have that talent heavy down in no time. After that, simply go to the top of the diner and wait for that ship to come and then hop on board. And that's it. Challenge mission 1 complete. 
Let's move on to the next one. Challenge Mission 2, Close Quarters. Enemies can only be killed if a player is nearby. This is definitely one of the easier challenges and like Surgical Strike, it doesn't affect how you play the mission too drastically. The main hiccup this presents is dealing with snipers who are typically perched far away from your team, but these are still easily dealt with if you have a reaper that teleports to their sniper perch and quickly dispatches them. For the Talon Heavy at the end of the map, just keep in mind he can only target one person at a time with his machine guns, so break line of sight if he targets you and the rest of your team will be able to pile on the damage. Any character that excels in close range is a good pick here. Reinhardt, D.Va, and Roadhog are good choices from the tank slot. Reaper is almost an essential pick from the DPS slot, but Mei or even Genji, Tracer, Sombra, or Symmetra could work as well. I think Brigida makes the most sense for support in order to maximize the amount of healing and damage done in close quarters, but Lucio, Moira, and even Mercy could work if you're more comfortable with one of those characters. Head out to the first area where you will deal with three waves of enemies. This shouldn't be too difficult, just make sure your team focuses down those enforcers. A sniper or assassin will spawn with the third wave of enemies. If it's a sniper, have your reaper teleport to her and take her out single-handedly. It shouldn't be too hard for him if he just shoots her in the face a bunch. If it's an assassin, just try to interrupt her charge with a stun ability like shield bash, pin, hook, or flashbang. If she manages to jump on one of your teammates, be sure to melee her quickly to get her off. After that, finish off the rest of your enemies and head out the door you just exploded. Enforcers will spawn in the hallways to the left and right of you, so be careful because you don't want to get stuck in those tight spaces with their shotguns. After you finish off those enemies, move forward and a mini boss will spawn. If it's a sniper, have your reaper teleport up to her and apply a few shotgun rounds to her dome. That should do the trick. If you're not running a reaper for some reason, have one of your mobility heroes go up there and do it instead. If it's an assassin, try to focus down any enforcers that spawn with her while she does her three teleports, and then turn your attention to her as she begins to charge. Once you get to the docks, you'll have to deal with a couple more waves of enemies that arrive on boats and gunships. A mini boss will also spawn at some point. It is usually a sniper that appears at the top of the stairs or on a wood crate near the beginning of this section. Just focus on enforcers until the sniper appears, then have your mobility character go after the sniper. When the sniper is finished, clear out the enemies that burst out of the next room. Once you clear the room, one of two things will happen. Either a sniper will spawn at the high ground on the other side of the bridge, and if you don't see this, an assassin will spawn after you cross over the bridge. If it's the sniper, have your reaper teleport to her while the rest of the team deals with adds. If there's no sniper, cross the bridge and deal with the assassin as a team. Once you clear out the enemies in the area past the bridge, move forward and you will encounter a talent heavy assault unit across the next bridge. If you have a Reinhardt, his shield holds up well to the heavy's chain gun, so get in his face with your shield so the rest of your team can pour on damage. Just be careful and watch out for the heavy going for a pin, as this does a ton of damage. This will also be a good spot to use any offensive alts, or even your defensive alts if you're getting overwhelmed by the heavy. Just remember, the Heavy can only target one person with his guns, so if you see him targeting you, take cover. However, if you see him shooting your ally, that means you are free to deal damage. Also look to use your CC abilities like Shield Bash to interrupt his gun usage. When you're finished with the Heavy, proceed forward to the Art Gallery. Fun fact about this section, it can be skipped entirely if you walk straight through the room and out the doors. Once the last person on your team leaves the room, the doors will shut and you will continue with the mission like normal. However, if you do fight here, you're likely to encounter an assassin along with some basic enemies. If you're struggling with the assassin, you can leave the room and go back out to where the talent heavy spawned, because it will isolate her from the rest of the enemies in the room. Now on to the last section of the map. The last section will be similar to the first section in that you'll be fighting off waves of enemies, but it's going to be more difficult as there will be more enforcers and mini bosses mixed in. Hopefully your team has gotten good at dealing with snipers and assassins at this point because they will be spawning roughly every 30 to 45 seconds. Also beware of a group completely made up of enforcers that will spawn about a minute into this section. You're probably used to running into groups of enemies with reckless abandon at this point, but you want to be a little more careful with this one because they can put out a ton of damage when 8 of them are grouped together. After you deal with a few rounds of enemies and mini bosses, a talent heavy will appear. 
Similar to before, dump your ults on him, and if you have a Reinhardt, be sure to get in his face while utilizing your shield, while being ready to avoid his pin. Try to stack any CC abilities you have to disrupt his firing animation. If you start losing team members, take to high ground to avoid the heavy's fire and start luring him away from the bodies. Once you get him far enough away and around a couple of corners, go for a res. If you play patiently and make good use of your ults, the heavy doesn't stand a chance. Once he's down, head to the top of the cafe and hop on the ship for that sweet, sweet challenge mission completion. Okay, challenge mission 3, Sympathy Gains. Damaging enemies heals other enemies. This is by far one of the hardest challenge missions in the game and requires the most teamwork, coordination, and thoughtfulness. If your team is unable to focus fire, this challenge will be a nightmare because nothing is going to die. My sneaky big tip for this game mode is if you're shooting something and it won't die, stop shooting. This means your teammate is shooting something else that is also not dying. When you stop shooting, you give your teammate a chance to finish their kill, and then you can all try to regroup and figure out the next target. My next tip is with ordinary groups of troopers, focus on killing the enforcers first. You should be doing this regardless, but it is even more important in this mission since not only do they present more of a threat, they are a more unique unit which should provide an easy target for your team to focus on. In that same vein, during mini-boss events, try to focus on the mini-boss or the normal units first before switching focus. For the sniper, you can usually burst her down before dealing with the adds, but for the assassin, it is sometimes more important to take out a group of enforcers before dealing with her, and this usually means fending off her first round of attack. Characters that can perform large bursts of damage work well here because the quicker you finish off your target, the less likely it is you'll interrupt someone else on your team who is targeting a different enemy. Additionally, heroes with abilities that can mark targets for focus fire, such as Discord, Hack, or Freeze, can also be helpful. This should be one of the least tanky comps you'll run in these challenge modes, as Roadhog is the only one that really fits the bill here, but you could also utilize a Reinhardt or Diva for their defensive abilities against bosses. For DPS, I like Hanzo, McCree, Mei, Sombra, or Widowmaker. A sneaky good pick for healer is Ana, because her anti-nade will actually stop enemies from being healed in this challenge mode. Otherwise, Zenyatta is good for discording targets for focus fire, and Mercy can even be helpful because, hey, it's one less person shooting at enemies. In the first area, have your team focus on enforcers first as they spawn. After enforcers, just try to be mindful of who your team is shooting at and try to focus your fire on the same target. This is where Discord Orb is super helpful as it gives everyone a visual target to aim for. A mini boss will spawn with a third wave of enemies. If it's a sniper, you should be able to focus her down quickly before dealing with any of the other enemies, but if it's an assassin, it will be a little trickier. Try to take down the closest enforcers to you while the assassin teleports three times, then focus the assassin when she strikes. If you don't finish her on your first go, try to avoid damaging any other enemies while she teleports around a second time as this will heal her. This can be a dangerous and time consuming process, but do your best to focus the assassin when she charges at your team. Once you finish these enemies, proceed through the door to the next stage of the map. People love to split up at this point, so honestly, you might be better off just not shooting at all if your team isn't very coordinated. However, groups of enemies will spawn in the right and left hallways. Finish off these enemies, then move forward, and you will encounter another mini-boss. If it's a sniper, quickly focus her down with your team, and if it's an assassin, follow the tips I provided for dealing with her in the previous section. It may take longer to deal with the assassin this time since more enforcers will spawn that you will need to deal with, but stay calm and play patiently and you should come out of this engagement just fine. Next, head to the docks and start focusing on the first enforcers you see. A sniper should show up around the same time as the first wave of enemies, so try to focus her down while being mindful of any enforcers that are getting close to your team. Something I should have mentioned earlier, making callouts is extremely helpful to completing this mission as there were several times in this run where I had to alert my team to mini bosses spawning or enforcers that were sneaking up on one member of our team so that we could focus them down. Once you clear out the docks, head to the next room and clear out all enemies you come across. Once you clear the room, a sniper should spawn on the high ground across the bridge. Focus her down or uh, block her off so that you can more effectively deal with the enforcers on this side. 
Once you get past the bridge, you'll encounter some enemies in the courtyard along with an assassin. Focus on the enforcers while the assassin does her thing, then switch your focus to the assassin when she comes in for her attack. There will be quite a few enforcers with her this time, so you may need to burn an alt or two to make it through this encounter, as it's one of the hardest encounters in this challenge mode. After you finish off the assassin and the rest of the enemies, proceed forward and you will spawn a Talon Heavy Assault unit on the far side of the next bridge. Ironically, the Talon Heavy isn't so bad on this challenge mission because he's so big he becomes the obvious target for your team to focus on. He'll probably pin his way over to your side of the bridge, and at this point, you can kite him back towards the courtyard so you have more room to hide from his attacks. Try to spread out as the Heavy can only target one of you at a time with his guns, so if he's firing at one person, the rest of the team will be able to damage him from different angles. This is also a good time to utilize offensive ultimates if you have any in store. Maze is particularly nice here because of how long it freezes the Heavy. Roadhog's ultimate can also be extremely powerful here if you're able to fire it directly into the Heavy's critical spots. Once you've finished off the Heavy, move on to the next section. You can actually completely skip the art gallery section by walking straight through the room and out the next set of doors. Once the last teammate exits, the doors behind you will shut and you can proceed with the mission like normal. I would recommend doing this for this challenge mission because you are likely to encounter an assassin in that room and they are the most annoying enemy in this challenge mode. If you do decide to fight it out here, try to kite the assassin out of the room back out to where the heavy spawned. This will isolate her from the rest of the enemies and make it easier for your team to focus her down. Once you finish off the rest of the enemies, move on to the final section. The last section is similar to the first section in that you will be fighting off waves of enemies. However, it will be more difficult now as they will throw more enforcers and mini bosses at you. It's important to utilize high ground here to keep your team safe from swarms of enforcers. Make sure to call out the enforcers you're shooting at to burn them down as fast as possible, but you must quickly turn your attention to the mini bosses once they spawn. If you don't focus fire well, you will find yourself being overrun by undying enemies because you will no longer be able to effectively focus fire. One thing our team could have done better here is to rotate around to the other high ground to create more space once enemies started closing in on us. Instead, we ended up burning alts and dying because we were overrun with enemies from both sides. Once you defeat a few waves of enemies, the Talon Heavy Assault will spawn. Try to focus him early and often because if you have to eliminate any adds, they will end up healing him. Take it slow and keep your distance from the heavy, using any helpful alts as they become available. If you play as a team, you should bring that heavy down in no time. And with that, head upstairs to the evac ship and you have completed the most difficult challenge mission in the Overwatch archives. Alright friends, let's wrap it up since this video has gotten pretty long. Drop a comment below if you think I missed any helpful heroes along the way, and if you found this guide helpful, be sure to check out my uprising and forthcoming storm rising guides. This has been the Mango Slice, good luck and have fun.